my dear friends we we gather here today to pray for our beloved dead it's a difficult time for a lot of families today it's a difficult time because they lost someone or the, the lost members at the time they could not even grieve them or bury them and so we gather here to pray for all of those who have died at this time pray for those who have died from this virus but we also pray for all those who have died from other forms of diseases and accidents or, or whatever else that took them away from us at this time where we didn't have the opportunity to even say goodbye or just let them know how much we care or love them and so we pray for them all but I also like us to pray for those who are grieving, those who have been personally touched by the hands and the impact of death at this time. That God may heal their pain, that God may comfort their loss, that God may give them hope of a future life. I'm sure you do have people you would like to pray for at this mass. Just take the next 30 seconds or one minute to bring them up to the altar of God. Bring their names up to the altar of God and let us all bring them to God's throne in heaven. Our opening hymn will be Asleep in Jesus, Blessed Sleep. Asleep in Jesus, Blessed Sleep. Oh, sleep in Jesus, Blessed Sleep. From which none else would weep to weep, he comment on disturbed repose, unbroken by the last of hopes. Our sleeping Jesus, peaceful rest. Whose waking is supremely blessed. No fear, no woe shall be that of that manifest my Savior's power. Our sleeping Jesus, oh, for me, may such a blissful refuge be. Securely shall my ashes lie, and with this summons from on high. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, I'd like to welcome you to this Holy Mass offered for the souls of our beloved ones who have passed on to God. We pray that God may forgive their sins. We pray that God may grant them kind acceptance into his presence. We pray that God may bring comfort to all who grieve the loss a loved one or grief the consequences of those losses let us confess our sins and ask God's mercy not just for us but also for our beloved dead Lord Jesus you show mercy beyond the valley and grant forgiveness for every sin that comes to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you promised that we will rest with you and be with you. That is your will. Lord, we beg you, show kindness to everyone who didn't have the chance to say I'm sorry. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, for every grieving heart that is broken right now, 
for every grieving spirit that is crushed right now. We beg your mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins. May he bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who willed that our, be, our only begotten, that your only begotten Son, having conquered death, should pass over into the realms of heaven, grant we pray to you, to your departed servants, all those who have died from this coronavirus, O oh God, and people who have died during this period and could not be grieved that with the mortality of this life overcome, they may gaze eternally on you, their creator and redeemer. Bring comfort to those whose lives have been changed by this losses, O God. Those who may have to live without parents, grandparents, husbands, wives, children, co-workers. May your comfort be their strength, O God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hands of God. And no torment shall touch them. They seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead. And their passing away was thought an affliction. And their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For if before men indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed. Because God tried them and found them worthy of Himself. As gold in the furnace, He proved them. And as sacrificial offering, He took them to Himself. Those who trust in, in Him shall understand truth. And the faithful, shall abide in his love because grace and mercy are with his holy ones and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is the Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. He guides me in the right paths for his name's sake. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side, with your rod and your staff, they give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A second reading 
It's a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, our citizenship is in heaven. And from it, we also await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform with his glorified body. By the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will live. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit, reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart. They will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you. And utter all kinds of calumny against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, it's always an unusual experience each time I stand up here on this altar to celebrate, to celebrate an event like the Holy Mass. Because the beauty of our Catholic faith is that when we gather for Mass, it's not just those who are present that are, that are here. It's all of God's children. That's the beauty of our faith. That when we gather, the three dimensions of the Holy Church are gathered together. That means you and I, who are still fighting the battle of faith, the church militant is gathered. But with us are also gathered the church suffering. I mean, those who have passed, they are not in heaven yet. But they are in a stage of cleansing and purification because as Catholics we believe in the concept of purgatory. The Bible tells us nothing unclean 
shall ever enter heaven. Nothing with stain can enter heaven. But because as Catholics we know that not all sins are de deadly sins, John the Evangelist makes that very clear for us in his first letter. He read chapter, chapter 5. says, not all sins are deadly sins. That means if someone died in a state of a sin that is not deadly, you can't expect that they will go to hell. That's not possible. And so that makes us as Catholics understand we don't just bury our dead. We pray for our dead. Because St. John also said, if you see your brother or your sister in such a sin that is not deadly, says you pray for them. And, and God will show mercy. Those are not my words. Those are the words of St. John. It says, if you see your brother or your sister commit a sin that does not lead to death, you pray for him. You pray for her. Similarly, if my sister dies in a sin, or my brother dies in a state of a sin that doesn't lead to death, my prayers are effective, your prayers are effective to help them find God's mercy. And that's why, as Catholics, we believe in praying for our dead, not just honoring our death with burial. We pray for them. There are other denominations that um, also believe that once we die, there's nothing you can do about the dead. Once a person is dead, that's it. If they were not forgiven prior to their dying, there's nothing you and I can do. Now, Scripture doesn't say that. And so because Scripture doesn't say that, we do, we do pray for our dead. Now, Repentance. Repentance, I believe, is the act of an individual. That's me, you, anyone else. So, if I don't repent before I die, I cannot repent after I die. Because there is no possibility of repentance after death. But repentance does not equate forgiveness. Repentance is not a necessary condition by the Almighty God. God is not beholden to my repentance or your repentance before he forgives. Otherwise, I will have over power over God to forgive me. God's forgiveness is not dependent on anything I do. God is free to do what God chooses to do. Only God knows how to do that. So forgiveness is still possible because forgiveness is the act of the Almighty God. And if we say that God cannot forgive someone after they die, then God is not all-powerful. We, we cannot make both arguments. If God cannot forgive someone when they are dead, then God is not all-powerful. Then God cannot do all things. So, so that argument falls. The reason we pray for our dead is because though repentance is the act of the human, the human, the human person, Forgiveness is God's art. And God can do whatever God chooses to do. Jesus even testifies to something like that. He says, all blasphemy against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this world or in the world to come eternal life. Oh, that means in eternal life, the life after, there is possibility for forgiveness. It's just that someone who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven here or forgiven there either. I mean, someone else who did not fall under that category may be forgiven on the other side. And that's why we pray for them. Because if we can pray for someone to get healed, we can pray also for someone to get forgiven. If we can pray for someone to repent, we can pray for someone to be forgiven. That's why as Catholics, we do pray for our dead. There's a, there was a practice in the early Christian church that gives foundation and gives and sheds light on our need to pray for our dead. If you read 1 Corinthians, I think that's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 29. 
I believe it's 15 verse 29. You, you see, there was a practice where people whose family members were not baptized will go and get baptized. They will go and get baptized just because they believe the baptism will have an effect on their loved one who has passed. They will go and get baptized for them. Now, the Mormon church still, still does that practice today. They will get baptized for someone who has passed. It is biblical. It is in the New Testament. The belief of these Christian people was that God has the power to forgive at any time. God chooses to forgive. And so we pray for our dead. Now, in, in case you are grieving that your loved one did not have a priest by their side. Yeah, because at this time, a lot of people are going to die without anointing, without the possibility for the last sacrament. Yes, that's true. But the mistake will be that because the priest was not there to anoint and to give the Eucharist, Therefore, my sister, my mother, my son, my daughter, my co-worker, or someone that we care about did not receive the last sacrament. That will be false. And I will explain to you why that will be false. Don't forget that every priest is ordained. Every priest, every bishop, everyone who is ordained is ordained into the priesthood of Christ. That means the real priest is Christ Jesus. He is hanging. He is the one who is the real priest, the priest par excellence. When I function as a priest, when every priest functions as, as he is, he doesn't function in, in his own authority. He functions as a delegate of Christ. Now, that means when the delegate, or the delegated cannot be present, the boss is always present. That means Jesus is always present when we cannot be present. I think that logic is very simple. If I get my authority from Christ, who is able to be present at any time, at every time, anywhere at the same time, when I am unable to be there to do his job, he does his job. So, so that means your loved one was, did not die alone. Even though a priest wasn't able to be there because he could not be there. Now, if I'm able to be there to do it, yes, Jesus would not go there himself to do it because he has his delegate present. But because of the nature of times we find ourselves, there are so many people who will die without a physical person there to anoint or to give them the Eucharist. That's when the Lord Jesus does it. And the church has a theology behind it, says the church supplies Ecclesia supplements. The church supplies. Not because the church has that, does it by any other means. It's because Jesus is the head of the church. And the body of the church is you and I. So the church, that means the head of that church supplies. He meets that need. When his church cannot be present there. So, so in case you were worried, my loved one died, my mom died, there was no priest by his side. No. There, there was no physical priest like me, like you, like someone else. But the master was there. But the Lord was there. Because he promised, I will be with you always. I will be with you always. So Jesus was present there. They got the real anointing and forgiveness. You remember what happened on the cross? That guy did not need to be anointed by another priest because the boss himself was there. He says says, today, you will be with me in paradise. So, so that's the authority that Jesus has. And I believe he was there with your loved one. I, I wish your loved one had the opportunity to leave you a note to tell you how the experience was like. That it was better than anything they would ever imagine. That their last breath was not from fear or by fear. Because they could behold the Holy One of God present in their own spiritual vision. I believe that. And so though this may be difficult for us, the God, our God is saying this to us, that our loved ones did not die alone. 
the priest himself, the priest par excellence, was there to anoint them and to give them, not the body of Christ, to give them his own body. If I went there to give, I'll give the body of Christ because I am standing in for the Lord. The Lord himself gave his own body. And he gives that forgiveness. I give it in his name. He gives it in his own name. So they were blessed. They were blessed because the Lord himself was the minister. And so that brings me, you know, um, very quickly back to the beautiful Beatitudes. I, I was thinking about all of these qualifications and qualities of different people, most of which we don't even know about. There is a, there is a saying that a lot of us have qualities that can never be, never be tested in a standardized test. People don't see them. Only God sees them. And some of these ones who have died are loved ones. I've listened to several stories. People talk about, you know, how wonderful this, or most of these people were. I have no doubt that everyone, whether you know it or not, we may pass judgment on them. But the judgment of God is so different because we see people. We see only what people allow us to see. God sees everything that everyone is. That's why God loves everyone. And so as I hear, blessed are the poor in spirit. You, you cannot see and know who is poor in spirit. God does. Maybe your loved one that you think wasn't good enough was actually poor in spirit. More poor in spirit than, other, than I am, than anyone else. We don't have that. God knows that. He says, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek. They will inherit the land. Blessed are those who seek and fight for righteousness. I have no doubt if you just go down these Beatitudes, you will begin to see, even in the few things, the few qualities we could see in our loved ones, you would see how they exemplify all of the spiritual qualities that the Lord lays out here. And so so when, I, when, I, when I see this, I say to myself, our loved ones are resting in God. That we pray that in case there was anything to hold them back, that the Lord will cleanse them with his own precious blood, that the Lord will accept them as a fragrant offering, and that today they will be with our father Abraham on the other side and doing what we are doing for them right now. Because when they get to the other side, I didn't say the third level of our church, the church triumphant. When they get to the level of the other side, they don't need our prayers. We need their prayers. So we pray for them to get there so that when they get there, then they in turn begin to intercede for you and intercede for me and pray for us. And that's why the church is so beautiful. That here in this altar, right now and right here, our present the militant church represented by us, the church suffering represented by those we're praying for, and the church triumphant represented by those praying for the other two levels of us. What a beautiful mystery that we celebrate each time we gather in this place. You remember what the Bible said in the letter to the Hebrew? Say we have we have where we have come to is Mount Zion, the city of the living God, where everyone is a firstborn child of the Almighty God. Everyone in heaven, in poverty, and on earth. We gather together and celebrate. May God hear our prayers from this altar. May God hear our prayers from our hearts and my hands. And may God accept every soul that has passed at this time. May God grant forgiveness. And may God grant peace and rest. May God grant comfort to those who are grieving. May God grant assurance that we will know that everything is okay with our loved ones. So always I'd like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God, that God loves you very much. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. 
most merciful God, today I would offer this Mass, and we offer all of this Mass with my brothers and sisters around the world. We offer it, O oh God, for our loved ones who have died from this coronavirus. We pray and ask, O oh God, that you grant them mercy and rest. We pray, O oh God, that they may see you face to face. We pray that from heaven they will intercede for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I'd like to pray for someone that I know who passed away yesterday in Nigeria. He is a wonderful priest. I still speak of him in the, in the present tense. He is a wonderful priest. And we pray that God may rest him. Reverend Father Emmanuel Ode. That God may rest him and grant him peace from his labors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all your dead. People that you are bringing in the privacy of your own heart. That God who knows their names and knows their faces and knows their destiny may forgive every offense of theirs, may forgive every failing of theirs, that God may accept them like a gift that they are. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have lost loved ones personally, any one of you, at this time during this period. We pray that God may help comfort your heart. We pray that God may help you understand his purpose and his plan for your loved one who has, who has died. We pray that God, who is a husband of widows, who is a father of the orphans, who never leaves his people unattended, that he may attend to you and provide all your needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for health workers who have died. We pray for priests who have died from this disease. We pray for all those who are about to die or might die. We ask Almighty God that they may feel you, that they may see you, that they may know you and experience the power of your healing mercy at the moment of their last breath. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for ourselves too. We pray for ourselves for a happy day because no one knows when you will come for us. But we pray that your grace may help us prepare ourselves for a happy experience in our own death. And when that time comes, oh God, without fear, may we hearken to your summons. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We now ask our Blessed Mother to intercede with us and for us as we say the Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our lives, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of our womb, Jesus. O clement, so loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. For our offering, for our offering him, we will sing. We will sing the song. We will sing, It is well with my soul. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows rule, whatever my faith thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is 
world, this world, with my soul, with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which Seth has given our human hands have made it become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, on the sacrificial offering from this altar. We present to you for the souls of your servants who have died from this virus and who have died during this period. And never gave us a chance, O oh God, to grieve, to mourn, or to celebrate their lives. We ask, O oh God, that just as you bestow on these gifts the dignity of Christian faith, grant your servants the rewards of eternal life with you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful people, Lord, life is changed, not ended. When this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks he broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy 
to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy Broglie, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your children for whom this Mass is offered. All those who have died from this virus or have died during this period, O God. Their names and their lives were known to you better than anyone else. Grant that they who were united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, dear friends, using the words our Lord gave us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, Look not on the sins of our brothers and sisters who died during this period from this virus, oh God. For those who died from other causes. Let me beg you, look on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace I need in accordance with your will. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the merciful Lord be with you all and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of God's peace. From me to you, peace be with you. And may the peace of God be with all those who have died and are resting this day. Amen. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold our Savior, our resurrection and our life. He takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Most gracious God, there are many of your sons and daughters who desire to receive you this day, but are unable to. I beg you, dear God, that they may feel the same effect of the nourishment they desire. May their hearts be overwhelmed with your love. May their soul be overwhelmed with your spirit. May their homes be overwhelmed with your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
For our common hymn, we will sing Companions on the Journey. Companions on the Journey. We are all journeying together. Some have fallen. We still continue to journey together. We are companions on the journey. Breaking bread and sharing life. And in the love we bear is the hope we share. For we believe in the love of our God. We believe in the love of our God. <laughs> Let us pray. Through the sacrificial gifts which we have received, O Lord, bestow on, our depart, on your departed servants your great mercy. And to those you have endowed with the grace of baptism, grant also the fullness of eternal joy with you. We pray for those who grieve, O God, we ask that your presence may bring them comfort, healing, and grace, and an assurance that everything will be good. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to express my thanks to all of you for participating at this Mass. I pray that God, who was pleased to embrace our loved ones, I don't say take them, he embraced them that he may also grant them mercy and forgiveness. As always, I like to remind you that you are the delight of the Almighty God, that God loves you very much. For our closing hymn, I want us to sing the song Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance. My prayers are that you would have this blessed assurance. That though you are not there by your loved one's side to see them pass, that the Lord was there with them, that He may give you that blessed assurance. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Through the prayers of our blessed mother, the Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks. Be to God. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior.